breaking news from KXAN News. That breaking news this morning, a fiery crash along SH-45, leaving one dead and another in the hospital who may not make it. Good morning, I'm Sally Hernandez. And I'm Tom Miller. APD has lanes blocked near the Creedmoor exit. Erica Brenna is here in the First Warning Traffic Center following the delays. Good morning. Yeah, and you know what? We have two big issues as we kick off this Friday, very similar to last Friday. So here we go again. Two things I'm going to be monitoring very closely. This one, this deadly crash on 45, as far as widespread delays, we're not seeing that right now. Obviously, it is still very early, but here on the map, you can see eastbound SH-45 where that crash occurred right near Turnersville, Creedmoor, that area. You will be forced to take the service road. Uh, we don't know exactly when all those lanes are supposed to clear, but I don't anticipate this issue being a problem through the entire morning rush hour. Now here's the other issue we're watching in southwest Austin on northbound Mopac on the service road right there near Ben Garza Lane. It is completely shut down after a gas leak. This will be an issue if you are used to taking the service road of northbound Mopac between William Cannon and Highway 290. You will not be able to, you will be forced back onto the main lanes of Mopac. In fact, the exit for 290, uh, if you're used to going to the Chick-fil-A or the Target or the Walmart, you will not be able to do that. So big issue there that we'll be watching for the duration of the morning commute. I'll have another look at your traffic in just a moment. Erica, thank you. We're also following developing news in the First Warning Weather Center. There is that wildfire that continues to burn in Lownell County. Now, we've been looking at our camera out there live for um, the last few hours, and as the sun rises, we are able to see the fire still burning near Highway 71 southeast of Lano near Kingsland. Here's what we know about it. It's burned 500 acres, 40% contained now. As of last night, it was threatening 12 homes, but there are no evacuations at this time. We've reached out to find out why and are still waiting to hear back. Some of the issues, though, that firefighters are dealing with, not only the heat, also the wind and some dry vegetation. Yeah, a lot going on. The airplanes, airplanes rather, continue to drop water, which has helped, but the current conditions are not making it easy. This is the, the largest fire that we've seen so far in the Austin area uh, for this for this summer. It's uh, it's been a while. You'll remember we had some just a few miles away from here uh, early summer last year. Uh, so this area does see wildfires pretty frequently um, and we're going to continue to see this this pickup happen. Uh, this is kind of one of the first larger ones in the Austin area this year. Meteorologist Kristen Curry joins us. Kristen, what does this mean for us? Because this is something that you've been warning about, not only the dangerous heat, but just how dangerous it can be for wildfires. Absolutely. It's certainly that time of year, the lack of rainfall that we, we've seen, the ongoing drought, the heat, all of those combining together to give us some of these intense uh, fire weather conditions. But right now, my biggest concern, the winds. Let me show you what I'm looking at here, because I'm sure you've noticed even at your house, right, that the winds get a little gusty overnight. Well, right now, the winds are about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's the good news. What's even better is the fact that our humidity recovers overnight. So we're looking at a good amount of moisture sitting on top of Lano County right now. Good 70% relative humidity gets higher as you move towards the east here. But the fact that the winds are a little lighter, we've got more moisture. That's certainly going to be helping our hardworking crews out there fighting this fire. Now, the one thing that's working against crews and a lot of us, in fact, all of us, the temperatures that we've been looking at over the last several days, I mean, we're talking near record warmth again in those upper 70s to low 80s right now. 82 out where that fire is, but 80 here in Austin, 81 Giddings, 81 in Bastrop. And we are back up to 106 today with south winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, mainly sunny skies overhead. Coming up in your first morning forecast, this excessive heat wave, it rolls on all the way into next week. In fact, next week, probably going to be looking even worse for some of us. Wildfire concerns continue. We'll talk about the updated map. Plus, today is the big day. It is our summer fan drive. We're going to be talking about the need, why we do this every year at this time of year, all the things surrounding our summer fan drive. We're really excited about it coming up in your first Okay, Kristen, thank you. So right now you cannot drop off a stray animal at our taxpayer funded animal center unless that animal is severely injured or if it's a dangerous animal. Yeah, it's a big problem right now. The shelter told us that the moment it eases restrictions, the shelter fills right back up again. KXN's Grace Reader asked the shelter what solutions it's looking at. 
I mean, what do you do when you find an animal? For the better part of a year, animal advocates like Lori Michelle have been asking, why is the city animal shelter not open for intake? Our animal care cost has gone up significantly. Director Don Bland discussed those issues with Travis County Commissioners Thursday. The county chips in money to use the city animal shelter. It doesn't have its own. At its core, Bland says there's an influx of animals and too few kennels in a shelter that Bland says has never been quite big enough. We saw a uh, decreasing in spay and neuter during the pandemic across the United States, as well as longer stays for large and medium dogs. The biggest problem, those medium and large dogs. Bland says they're hard to adopt out, partially because apartments in Austin often have rules against them or expensive pet fees. But he also says they only reconnect roughly 8% of lost medium and large dogs with their owners. Our length of stay has increased uh, exponentially. Moving forward, commissioners talked about ways to expand spay and neuter services. And Bland wrote to us that he's still working on a long-term goal of opening another adoption center to deal with some of the capacity issues. But for now, animal advocates say there need to be changes made so taxpayers have access to the shelter they pay for. To leave these people in Austin uh, desperate for help, for to, who are trying to help these animals that are on the streets, these dogs who are on the street, and for a city to close its doors to them, it's, it's shameful. Grace Reader, KXAN News. So what does the animal center expect you to do if you do find a lost pet? Well, staff says you've got a 40% higher chance of finding a pet's owner just by knocking on a door nearby. When you find it, then bringing it to the shelter. They also recommend posting on social media and making a found pet profile on their website. An update on the cocaine found in the White House, what forensic testing had to say. And a major strike ahead, what this could mean for your package deliveries. Good morning, it is Friday as we kick off another day here in Central Texas. This is a live look out in Llano County uh, where we've seen uh, a wildfire, 500 acres. We're going to have Another update on that and the firefighting effort in just a bit, but first to Washington. And we may never know who left a small packet of cocaine inside the White House. Never. Secret Service officials say forensic testing came back, but it didn't find anything. No evidence for the person responsible. Coming up next on the Today Show, NBC News' Kelly O'Donnell has the latest on the public and political criticism. Good morning. The Secret Service investigation into cocaine found in the West Wing of the White House is over now. And there is one known conclusion. That's frustration. Republican lawmakers who were briefed on the investigation are angry. Some are saying they don't understand how investigators could not have found the culprit. The White House says it's reviewing the findings. And the Secret Service and officials who are familiar with the investigation say the small plastic baggie found July 2nd in a cubby you used near the entrance to store things like personal electronics was tested and was tested with sophisticated testing equipment for fingerprints for DNA. But no evidence was found that could link that cocaine to a list of more than 500 individuals who had access to that entrance in the days before the cocaine was found. That leaves them nowhere to go but a mystery and a high profile problem for the White House unresolved. We'll have more on all of this coming up on today. Still ahead, why you could soon see more Department of Public Safety troopers patrolling Austin. The latest in the Destination Texas series are heading over to San Angelo to see some of their unique attractions. Good morning, everyone. This is a live look outside to give you an idea of what it's looking like. We're also keeping track of a fire that continues to grow and burn in the hill country. We're going to get the status on that coming up in just the next few minutes here on KXAN News today. All summer long, we are highlighting spots across Texas that you may want to visit on maybe a quick road trip or a longer one. San Angelo is nestled in the Concho Valley and has quite a few unique attractions. Yeah, it has a historic, beautiful downtown filled with shops and restaurants and also paths along the river. Sonora Scott shows us some of the newest spots to explore. San Angelo was recently named the visual arts capital of Texas. With new artwork popping up all over the city, it doesn't take long to understand why. Nearly a dozen new murals were just completed. You and your family will have a blast finding them all and snapping a few photos, creating your own personal art. 
If the outdoors is calling your name, you can take a dip in Lake Nasworthy, and right next door is the San Angelo Nature Center. There, you can learn about animals native to West Texas and even meet a few friends who are from other parts of the nation and the world. Creepy, crawly, furry, or feathers, whatever you'd like to learn about, the San Angelo Nature Center has you covered. If you're looking to make some sweet memories with your family and maybe reminisce about a few of your own, this next stop is for you. Hey guys, welcome to Froyo and Sweets downtown. So we actually have 10 flavors of frozen yogurt. Um, we change them seasonally and periodically. In addition to being a frozen yogurt shop, we also are a candy shop. So we currently hold freeze-dried candy, which is actually the latest and greatest version of your favorite candies. We have a ton of nostalgic candy. We also have trending candy. Speaking of trending and the latest and greatest, this shop is one of many new hotspots that just opened within the last year. There's so much to do in the oasis of West Texas, so fuel up for lots of fun. For Destination Texas in San Angelo, I'm Sonora Scott. Never had a reason to go to San Angelo until now. <laughs> you know? what a, what, how many hours is that to drive to San Angelo? It's a few. Girl, <laughs> it's a few it's hours. at least like four or five. Okay. Yeah. Right. Is that far? Yeah. yeah. We'll find out. Oh yeah, let me know. You're okay. gonna you're gonna Google I'll, it. I'll Google it. Okay. I'm not gonna oh, I thought you were right driving now. to San Jose. No, I know. No, no, I was no. like, you're gonna leave now. <laughs> <laughs> let me show you what's going on with our forecast because we've got uh, pretty quiet conditions here. Clouds and radar not showing us anything here at home except up in the Panhandle. They're getting some of the good stuff. They're getting some rain. I wish we can pull some of that down, but unfortunately that's not how it works. Wildfire danger moderate to high today in spots. So what's really saving us is the fact that we've got humidity, uh, but unfortunately. Unfortunately, we get some gusty winds overnight, the ongoing heat, ongoing drought not working in our favor. So obviously we're going to keep uh, very close eyes on Llano County today as we continue to monitor conditions in and around that fire. Currently sitting at 80 degrees here in Austin, your feels like temperature. 85. So with that humidity, you can factor in a good four or five degrees on top of the afternoon air temperatures, which will likely be around 106 here in Austin. Feels like temperature up to about 110, 111. So not quite as hot as yesterday, but we're talking one to two degrees. It's not a noticeable difference, unfortunately. So your feels like temperatures anywhere from 105 to 110 today. Make sure you're taking breaks in the shade, staying hydrated. Again, this process starts before you even leave the house. You want to make sure you've got that good chug of water before you walk out because that sun's going to be pretty relentless today. We've got heat alerts in effect for all of central Texas. You'll notice the colors have kind of shifted a little bit uh, because temperatures are coming down just one to two degrees. We're right up against that threshold between heat advisory and excessive heat warning. Bottom line, we are underneath some sort of heat alert everywhere until 9 p.m. tonight with a pretty good chance that these will continue heading into the weekend. Why? Because high pressure is in control. Although it shifts further to the west, this is going to strengthen and it's going to take pretty much take hold of our weather and continue its grasp on Texas for the next several days. So 106 today, 106 for your Saturday, 105 Sunday. We continue with the record heat it looks like through pretty much all of next week. Mostly sunny skies up top, overnight lows in the upper 70s. And again, today is the big day. We are looking for monetary donations and boxed fans to hand out to Central Texans who have no way to stay cool in this summer heat. So you can scan the QR code or Better yet, come visit us. Cake Stand Studios, Whittlesey Landscape Supplies, Roger Beasley Mazda. We're going to have Cake Stand out there, Family Elder Care out there. We're looking forward to seeing you. Basically, today is the day we want to make sure that everybody has a stay, has a way, I should say, to stay cool uh, as we get into the back end of the summer. Erica? All right, thanks so much. Hey, by the way, it's about three and a half hour drive to San Angelo from Austin. All right, Mopac and Barton Creek, the green belt near 360. Now, here's the deal. South of here, we've got a pretty big issue on the service road of Mopac headed up northbound. What's a bummer is that I don't have any of the tech stock cameras there to show you exactly what's happening, but here's what is going on. On the northbound service road, there was a gas leak and the service road is completely shut down from Ben Garza to about 290. So if you're used to taking the service road from William Cannon towards 290, making a stop at Chick-fil-A, doing the U-turn for uh, Target, that sort of thing, that's gonna be a problem. You'll be forced to get on to the main lanes of Mopac and as of right now, they have that exit for 290 also closed. There's gonna be a lot of wiggling around 
to get back onto that service road of Mopac and 290. So heads up about that. That's going to be an issue for several hours. Big picture wise, what else we're watching? Okay, on the eastbound main lanes of 45 near Creedmoor, Turnersville Road, there was unfortunately a deadly crash overnight and they have the eastbound lanes closed. In that situation, you'll be forced under the service road and then be able to get back on. It's early, so we're not seeing significant delays in that area, but it's something we're watching very closely. You cannot keep being dwindled and marginalized and disrespected and dishonored. Thousands of Hollywood actors are heading to the picket lines. This is after their union and a trade group representing leading studios failed to reach a deal on a new contract. The union represents 160,000 movie and TV actors, hosts, and other performers like voiceover artists. It's been negotiating a new three-year contract with the major studios, but those studios aren't budging on wage demands, residuals from the streaming services, and language around artificial intelligence. Disney CEO Bob Iger responding to the actors' demands in an exclusive interview with CNBC. There's a level of expectation that they have that is just not realistic. The actors join nearly 20,000 Writers Guild members who've been on strike for more than two months now. It's the first time since 1960 that both unions are striking. At film premieres, actors saying they would abide by the strike. And coming up on today, the A-list celebrities who already walked off the red carpet at a blockbuster premiere. Well, UPS is planning a strike in just the next 18 days if something doesn't happen. NBC's Taylor Young is in Charlotte showing the preparations for what could be the largest strike against a single employer in U.S. history. For thousands of UPS workers in Charlotte, this hub is where they start their day. Pretty much just pick the keys up and roll. And then Charles Plyler has worn this brown uniform for seven years. He says the last three have been the most challenging. 10 to 12 hour days in a truck that has no AC. On days like this when it's 90, upper 90s in Charlotte, Sometimes the back of these packaged cars can get up to 130, 140. The Teamsters, a union representing Plyler and 340,000 other UPS workers, is fighting for better working conditions and pay. Talks between the shipping giant and the union fell apart last week, increasing the possibility of a nationwide strike beginning August 1st. We're hoping it's a game of chicken, and we hope there's an 11th hour deal at least, or maybe we hope sooner. According to UPS, the company moved nearly 18 million packages daily between January and March. A delivery halt of this magnitude would devastate not only the company, but the entire U.S. supply chain. I mean, you, you have people from the VA getting medicine, um, you know, hospitals, they're waiting on the UPS guy to deliver so they can do what they need to do with their patients. Um, people have food that come in UPS, like it affects everyone nationwide. I mean, it will put the nation on, it, it will hit the brakes on the entire nation. Right now, competing shipping companies are preparing for an industry disruption. FedEx is accepting additional volume and is encouraging companies who use UPS to open new accounts. Despite an effort by competitors to soften a potential shipping crisis, economists say it won't be enough. We don't want to have to strike. Um, we really don't, but uh, if we have to, we have to. Um, you know, the cost of living's up in Charlotte. Um, the nation's been hit with uh, inflation. So we just, you know, we'd like to be, we'd, we'd like the contract to reflect that. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Hey, good morning to you. Big 12 media days in the books, a couple of weeks, and Longhorns will go to training camp. Pick to win the Big 12, big reason, well, depth and quarterback. Quinn Ewers. A year after that first season where things were going well, then got knocked out of the Alabama game, and then he helped the Longhorns whitewash Oklahoma and then struggled against Oklahoma State. So you detect a little bit of a pattern that he hopes he can learn from. Never really had a season like I did last year um, in my entire life. So uh, kind of going through, through those ups and downs was a little bit tough for me. Um, but at the end of the day, I learned uh, a whole lot that I'm able to take with me this year and kind of, um, you know, apply that. On Thursday, seven more teams spoke. Oklahoma leaving the conference with Texas. Brent Venable's second year trying to make a big jump from a 6-7 and seven record. K-State would like to keep it right where they are. Defending Big 12 champs, but they'll have to do it 
without the deuce. The pride of Cedar Ridge High School has moved on from an outstanding college career. Well, you don't replace Deuce Vaughn, and if you want to come here on Sundays, he's going to be playing here every Sunday, and he's going to be uh, having a heck of an NFL career, and I love the kid because of uh, his passion uh, for football and uh, uh, him allowing me to be in his life. If we're successful, it's because of all of us, you know, as a staff and certainly as, as, a, as a program, our players. Um, when you're not successful, it all, all the, you know, rests right at your, your, your seat. So heavy is the crown. But I embrace that. You know, I've always put a lot on myself. So um, a lot of, a lot of um, a learning and growing and, and uh, reflecting. And, and uh, again, really expect, uh, again, come back this year and, and learn from those mistakes. You learn a lot through failure, as we, we all talk about a lot in dealing with sports. Yeah, this just gets the talking season started next week. The SEC extravaganza, four days in Nashville. Thanks for joining KXAN News today. You can also listen to KXAN News Nightly every weekday after 5.30 p.m. for in-depth coverage on what matters most to you.